So, the challenge is this. You are in an elevator on the first floor, and there's one other person with you in that elevator. You reach out with your finger and you touch the button for the third floor, which means you have about 20 to 35 seconds as that door shuts and that elevator starts to go up to the third floor. You have 20 to 35 seconds to tell that stranger who just asked you, what is Unitarian Universalism, your answer. What is your 30-second elevator speech? What is Unitarian Universalism? Go. The Reverend Bill Sinkford, who was at the time the first black president of the Unitarian Universalist Association and also the first black religious leader of a predominantly white denomination in America, Bill Sinkford came up with his elevator speech. Now, I'm not saying that this is the perfect answer to Unitarian Universalism, but it's a good starting place. This is what Bill said. I believe in you, you believe in me, and together we believe we can help heal the world. Now that statement, three sentences, holds so much and reveals so much about Unitarian Universalism. Note it doesn't start out by saying, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. It starts by saying, I believe in you. I believe in your humanity and your goodness and your potential. And wow, you believe the same thing about that in me. So it reveals that at its heart, Unitarian Universalism is a very earthbound human-focused religion. Now, there is space for there to be a divinity. There is space for there to be God for those of us who find meaning in those words and in that reality. But we start with our precious humanness. But it's not just about us. It's just not about what we believe about each other. It's about what we believe we're called to do in the world. We believe that with our humanness, we can join together and help heal the world. Unitarian Universalism is an embodied faith. It is a faith not just of words, but at its best, at our best. We are a faith of action. I've shared that I was at a party a few years ago, and during a conversation, when somebody discovered that I was a Unitarian Universalist minister, they got a kind of wicked gleam in their eye, and with a, a, a touch of sarcasm, I would say, they asked how I define a Unitarian Universalist. I responded. Unitarian Universalists are people who believe in the transforming power of love. That love compels us to see every person as having inherent worth and dignity. It challenges us to see every person as having potential goodness within them, even as they are sarcastically asking the question <laughs> and asking me to define my faith. Unitarian Universalists also believe that everyone and everything is connected. Because of this connection, we have a sacred responsibility to everyone and everything on this planet. We must work towards everyone and everything with care, concern, and compassion. Unitarian Universalists believe that we are all connected we are stronger together than apart, that we are love's hands in the world, that we are called to create justice, and that we are responsible for each other and the earth. 
So where does this Unitarian Universalism come from? As I often say, one of the great misconceptions about Unitarian Universalists is was found, that it was founded in the 60s when a bunch of hippies who were wearing tie-dye and smoking pot got together and kind of said, let's create a religion where we love everybody. <laughs> now, although there were Unitarian Universalists in the 60s who wore tie-dye and smoked pot, I see some of you here today. <laughs> And rumor has it that there are currently Unitarian Universalists who still wear tie-dye <laughs> and still smoke pot. <laughs> but that's not how and when we were created. Our Unitarian Universalist faith is an ancient faith, growing from two separate and long-standing traditions, the Unitarian tradition and the Universalist tradition. Both Unitarianism and Universalism reach back to first earth-based pagan indigenous origins, which I might add is the origin place of every major world religion. It was at one time earth-based pagan and indigenous in its orders. So we reach back that far. Then we reach back to over 2,000 years ago to Judaism, and then we reach to the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. Our Unitarian forebears looked at Jesus as a spirit-filled human being and a great moral teacher. The early Unitarians believed he was not divine, he was a human being just like us. Rather than asking us to worship unattainable divinity, Early Unitarians believed Jesus called us to become fully realized and loving human beings. Our Unitarian roots are, are, are anchored in the radical belief that human beings have within them not original sin, but original blessing. That in, if that blessing within us is nurtured, we have the potential to create much good in the world. We can cultivate our spiritual character. Unitarianism teaches that the world at its core is one, what Unitarian Ralph Waldo Emerson called the soul of the whole. We are one with all living things that share this earth home with us. On the other side of things, our universalist roots are anchored in the radical belief that all human beings are worthy of love. All human beings are worthy of love. And that if there is a God, then that God is a loving God who would never condemn anyone to eternal damnation. No human wrongdoing is bigger than the universe's infinite love. Therefore, the purpose of life isn't to be fearful or obedient. The purpose of life is to be happy and fulfilled, knowing that you are loved. Universalism reminds us that the purpose of religion is to recall us to our best selves again so that we can work together to mend our broken and our hurting world. We don't spend time arguing over tiny parts of religious dogma and doctrine. There are more important things to be doing. In the words of the late Reverend Dr. Boris Church, we Unitarian Universalists have inherited a magnificent theological legacy in a sweeping answer to creeds that divide the human family, Unitarianism teaches we spring from a common source. And Universalism proclaims that we share a common destiny. Now, this kind of thinking has been rarely popular in the world, and it has not been widely embraced. 
Throughout our long history, mainstream conservative Christianity has tried to silence us or destroy us. The orthodoxy, which is based on the Greek word orthos, meaning the right way, they've always been threatened by us where we undermine traditional institutional power and patterns of controlling people through forced religious belief. Because of this, we've been among those who were arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and burned at the stake for our commitment to think outside of ideas locked in dogma and doctrine. And I might add, we were in good company among those arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and burned at the stake, because right in there with the Unitarians and the Universalists were Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Wiccans, and powerful female nature-based mystics and healers. Throughout a long history, Unitarians and Universalists were called heretics. There we go, which is based on a Greek word meaning those who choose. We wear the name heretic as a badge of honor, for we are the people of a chosen faith, our chosen faith. Our chosen faith tells us that the purpose of life isn't to worship God. The purpose of life isn't to earn God's salvation in a life after death. In the words of Katie Norris, our chosen faith speaks of salvation in this life through knowing you are loved just as you are and discovering who you are and your place in the universe so that you can live out your purpose in life, this life. Can you say that with me? Our chosen faith speaks of salvation in this life, knowing that you are loved just as you are and discovering who you are and your place in the universe so that you can live out your purpose in life. The Reverend Tom Owen Towell writes, Peace, love, and joy are all central themes in Unitarian Universalism. Throughout religious history, says Reverend Owen Toll, matters of joy, everything from being silly to pure delight, have been undervalued since Orthodox religion's been a serious, if not grim, enterprise. For some believers, the more you suffer, the more religious you are. A religious leader once said to comedian Groucho Marx, how many of us have, know who Groucho Marx is, okay? So if you don't, YouTube. So this religious leader sees this great comedian, Groucho Marx, and he goes up and he says, Groucho, I want to shake your hand for all the joy you've brought into the world. Groucho Marx responded to the religious leader, why, thank you, and I want to shake your hand for all the joy you've taken out of the world. <laughs> Too frequently, religion has devoutly dimmed rather than lit life's spark. That's why an affirming, buoyant, and blazing faith such as Unitarian Universalism is particularly valuable in a world where organized religion all too often majors in fear, guilt, and misery. Now, let me be clear. I'm not bashing those other faith traditions. They obviously work and have meaning for many, many people. That's why they're so popular. My mom was a devout member of a conservative faith tradition, and it brought her much peace and meaning to her life, and it let her face her death with a sense of peace and anticipation, and I treasure that. And let's be really honest with each other. Clearly, our progressive religious thinking 
is among the most unpopular in the country. After all, Unitarian Universalism is one of the smallest, most minuscule of denominations in the country. We barely register with 2,000 congregations and maybe 175,000 official members. You do the math. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Most people have never heard of us. And if they have, what they've heard has been less than flattering. Which brings us back to our question, what is Unitarian Universalism and the elevator speech? So I want to leave you with four quick takeaways. We are the faith tradition that says, don't check your brain at the door. Unitarian Universalism, <laughs> Unitarian Universalism prizes critical thinking. It prizes your ability to reason for yourself what is true with a small t, because nothing is true with a capital T. I think Unitarian, for me personally, Unitarian Universalism is the only place I've found that is big enough to hold all of my questions, all of my doubts, all of my wonderings, and all of my answers. We believe that we need not think alike to love alike. Don't check your brain at the door. Think critically. Think for yourself and know, as one Unitarian Universalist says, that we are a religion that will never say, I'm right, you're wrong. What is Unitarian Universalism? We are the faith tradition that says, you are good and you are loved. As Unitarian Universalist Leila Ibrahim once said, it's a blessing that you were born. It's a blessing. As we often sing, how could anyone ever tell you you were anything less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you you were less than whole? How could anyone fail to notice that your living and your loving is a miracle? How deeply you're connected to the soul of the whole. We are the religious tradition that says your spiritual life is a journey and not a destination. Unitarian Universalism isn't about some preordained, pre-thought out sense of what is right and true that we are journeying to figure out how to learn and accept somebody else's definition of religion. We realize that our spiritual life is a process. If you believe at age 30 the same things that you believe at age 60, you've been asleep for 30 years because knowledge changes. Our experiences shape us. We know more now than we did in the past. And so our spiritual life has to adapt and change and, rich and, and deepen and become richer over time. Religious beliefs are not meant to be set in stone but they are a beautiful, unfolding mosaic of meaning. The Reverend Kathleen Mateague says, Unitarian Universalism is the faith community that helps you deepen into life's questions even when there are no final answers. Last but not least, Unitarian Universalism is the faith tradition that says this life is the one that matters. This life, this is the life that matters. We are the only world religion, according to anthropologist Sidney Story, that <laughs> doesn't definitively say what happens after death. We don't tell you what will happen when you die. We each have our individual beliefs and questions and theories about that, which is one reason I love it when we say passing into the mysteries of death. But what we share is a belief that we need to make the best of this life 
here and now. But not just for ourselves. This isn't just about us. It's not just about you, use, but we need to make the best of life for others. And this is where our commitment to social justice comes from. We don't offer salvation in the next life, but we believe that we are called to bring a form of salvation into this life. We believe that we must take our broken world and build build a kind of heaven on earth through putting our hands together and working for justice and equity for those who are marginalized. We must prioritize the most vulnerable among us. Now, we aren't naive. The injustices and inequities, the patriarchy, the ableism, the greed, the exploitation, the environmental degradation, and the white supremacy culture have deep roots that we will not eradicate in our lifetime. But while we are here, we can do a few things to push forward the project of justice and equity for all. May it be so. Blessed be. Amen.